Hello everyone and welcome to the very first video podcast from Gamecast. Uh, this is actually our second attempt as I forgot to press start on the microphone, so already technical difficulties, but we're getting there. Say hello. Uh, hello. Hi. <laughs> My name is James. <laughs> oh God. So as you imagine, we've I think already... we did this the last time, did we? What? Just there now? I just forgot to press record. No, like, I mean like the very first time. Did we press record? We didn't forget to press record. We did. For like five minutes. Okay. Yeah. Then and we, we copped it that we time. It again. <laughs> it's a we're learning. It's a we'll learning get there. Curve. It's a learning curve. Okay, James. So, uh, this question may shock you. I haven't asked it in the last twenty minutes. <laughs> what are you playing right now? Elder Scrolls Blades on my phone, which I've just showed him because the first time he yes, didn't know what I, I was have, talking about. <laughs> I have seen it since we've recorded this session. Um, explain a bit of the game. That's basically just the Elder Scrolls RPG turn-based real-time strategy on your phone. Um, pretty much, that's pretty much as it is really. Much what more. Does it, play? it plays like a game I remember. Uh, Warband. Have you ever heard of Warband? Yeah, I've yeah, played it, it, it. It really, really plays like that, uh, except obviously more basic controls. Yeah, so it's pretty fun. Like if you're just bored and you just want to play a fantasy game on the go. I, am, I imagine it is kind of like twenty minutes. And, All right, I'm done. Too much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose if you're on a train or something, waiting on a, mm. waiting on a meeting because you're really important. And right. that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, me and myself, I've been playing the PlayStation exclusive Days Gone, and uh, I, I used this line last time. I'm going to use it again because you didn't hear it. Uh, all the negative comments, all the bad reviews, all the um, the people saying the glitches and whatnot—they're a hundred percent true. Uh, I'm encountering serious issues with the game not in ga- game breaking but with a game that has such hype around it and was uh, pitched as PlayStation's game of the summer it really should be doing better it should be performing a lot better than the way it is so yeah we're going to dive straight into the first question um, speaking of exclusives how do you feel about exclusives in gaming with the likes of PlayStation and Xbox and Nintendo all having their own uh, titles and whatnot? Um, I think it's across the board I think it's good for gaming as a whole because the companies like Nintendo Sony and Microsoft like to have all the third party games but they need something to make themselves unique and separate themselves from everybody else and the only way they can do that is by developing their own games and really trying to push the boundaries of what they can do with their equipment and improving their hardware you see when they do first announce their consoles you'll You'll have these beautifully designed games that are just coming out. Just sh- most of the time, they're shit, really. But the graphics wise are unbelievably good. Like, mm. but uh, yeah, I think it's good, good enough for the market. I think. Uh, I was just thinking about something there. Uh, like, <laughs> let's say about twenty years ago, no one really in the games industry could put their own stamp on these per- these really like polished games and all because like mm. there was a load of different companies that just couldn't afford to do it but the likes of Microsoft mm. Sony Nintendo they're like huge giants that like if a game goes bad they can afford to take the hit mm. unlike um, let's say Bioware a developer who's now like under serious trouble because of like Anthem <coughs> if Sony have a dud of a game dud of a game they have the rest of their entertainment industries to kind of fall back on with the yeah. on that. So like it is good now that we do have that kind of development in exclusives. Uh, personally, I really, really look forward to exclusives. For me, it feels like like a blockbuster being released. Like let's say like Avengers Endgame coming out. I would feel as giddy and excited for that as I would for The Last of Us 2 because I know I'm getting a really, really good story-driven game, which I feel the exclusives are. They're oh, yeah. significantly better. Yeah, I would argue that Sony's exclusives trump uh, Xboxes by a mile, which is obvious. Everyone knows that. that it's nearly fact by this stage. Uh, because Microsoft seemed to cater towards uh, multiplayers, I would say. Like Halo, uh, like, I, 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 I never hear anyone talking about the story of Halo. Gears of War Online. Gears of War Online. Like, like they all Halo. seem to have some kind of online feature that's... <laughs> really driven and uh, whereas there's no online for Spider-Man excellent game there's no online for the last of us well there is an online but, yeah, yeah, but it's it, it's it's yeah, that shoved like down an, your that, throat that was an afterthought there. like how can we put a bit of longevity into this yeah one DLC that's an hour long won't, yeah. won't do it just put a little bit of longevity into it 
multiplayer in it and I have played the multiplayer I don't know if you have but it's actually never. like good I don't know if you've ever played Bioshock multiplayer never I didn't even know there was such a thing it's really good it's basically copy and paste I think the same kind of thing same kind of thing but it's really good and I enjoyed Bioshock multiplayer it was fantastic who would you argue has the best exclusives because well, that's probably wise for you because majority of your life you've had a Playstation yeah all my life really I always had a bad experience. I didn't even know what an Xbox was until five years after the PS2 came out, I'd say. I think so. I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. So even when I first got my Xbox 360, that went kaput. Well, not really kaput. It had the red ring of death, but it just somehow strode on like some kind of Terminator machine. And it just kept going for about two or three years after that. So red That must have been like really nerve-wracking to see that thing blinking away. I didn't even know what it was until a friend of mine came over and he was like, you know, that's like not good. And I was like, but it was so common like the red ring of death was for everything but I just turned it on and I was like oh cool it's red it's red oh. spinning lights and red and I was like that's cool yeah. good job Xbox PlayStation doesn't have spinning lights and death that goes yellow yeah, that goes yellow <laughs> rarely yeah um, but yeah I do feel like even Sony exclusives are a lot better even some of the games that I don't really enjoy Inf- like Infamous I know some people really like Infamous but I never really loved the Infamous games I couldn't really get into it just wasn't my kind of thing I'd say but they're still really good infamous level exclusive game like the infamous like how good that is that's where Xbox are yeah if you get me yeah that's the baseline that's a good baseline because yeah. I thought infamous was great it is I a really good game Like I just wasn't for me like, second sons is really really good yeah, I didn't really play that to be honest though. but it's very repetitive like it's kind of like oh graffiti but the first two are very repetitive you ever played yeah. those they're so repetitive especially the first one like I know they put a lot of emphasis on oh you can be a hero or a villain mm. but it's still like linear you're only like veering off one path and then you end up back in the same yeah. and another thing that I've only just realised that with like Sony exclusives they're not afraid to change up their games yes like if you think back God of War was always just kind of hack and slash and yeah. well, I don't what did they call those games where you earn points there's a uh, specific name on them but I can't recall even when like you're hitting your enemy when you build up. Oh, it was just a hack and slash. Yeah, hack and slash. I guess, but I can't recall what the title is. Like Japanese games, where like you, you get oh, points, yo. you're like feeding the shell people, and you're getting multiple points and combos and stuff. Stuff like that. That's what God of War reminds me of on PlayStation Three and before, and then the new God of War is just just fantastic. It's just, it's just a little bit. It plays differently than the other ones, probably. Yes. I haven't played it, but I know just from looking at videos of it, it looks completely like out of the norm for what a God of War game usually is like you played the like, have you played the original <laughs> 3 yeah I played 1, 2 and 3 and I played 4 yeah so uh, how long did it take you to do 1, 2 and 3 good while yeah. a good while yeah. I finished God of War in about a week <laughs> so um, I would say that a very very hidden gem not hidden, but under underappreciated, under under recognized. Nintendo has some amazing uh, exclusives, which basically all their games are exclusives. Like yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like rarely do you see like a third party game making its way over to Nintendo, yeah. unless like it's a game they know is going to sell. Like Cuphead, like everyone's going to buy Cuphead. What the fuck is Cuphead? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows Cuphead. Anyway, yeah. So I agree that PlayStation are the top exclusive. Uh, game provider in the industry followed by Nintendo and way down on the floor is Xbox and they really need to change that going into the next gen I feel mm. they are going to be left for dead I think <laughs> so yeah yeah that's pretty much it yeah. that's it that's it I feel like Sony have a good model at the moment Nintendo make weird innovative games quirky quirky yeah. consoles and shit they have their own weird thing going on. They they they're kind of bullshit merchants because they're like, oh here's a here's a Super Mario game that'll keep you going for six months while we work on an actual game. And you're like, oh yeah, the stupid game like Mario, like fucking like I I'm not a fan of the Mario games. I'll be honest, uh, I could never beat them, but uh, yeah, I, Sony are just running away with it at the moment. And you know I'd actually really really welcome um, Xbox and Nintendo really challenging them for the top spot. Mm. it would be really really good to see and with Google Stadia coming out they're going to need some exclusives too to draw them draw people to that console to play this innovative new game 
So I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, exclusives come out in the next while. Like I know Control. And the streaming this. services are going to need some major attention. Major, major exclusives to really yeah. drive home that exclusive is the place to, to make be. It even worth though, it, like it's to make it worth it even for people that have shitty internet connection and things like that. They really need to have something that's just I really need to have this streaming service like now. Yeah. I need it now. And that actually moves into our next question. How do you feel about gaming moving towards more streaming services and digital content? Well, it's inevitably be gonna gonna happen. You know, it costs everything about from business perspective for big companies. Yeah. They have to make the hardware, the hardware costs money. You think about like PlayStation when they even launched. burning discs like yeah well like even if you think like PlayStation launched the PS4, I think they sold each one at like thirty forty euros a loss each one. Really? Yeah, they make the money back from the games over time, and eventually they bring. Eventually, what happens is they they release the console at a loss, and then over time the technology becomes cheaper to make the console. You see, I was actually wondering that last week. Then then they keep selling it for the same price. But the technology is yeah. Cheaper, eventually, it levels years. out. Yeah, the levels go back down. Yeah, way. yeah. But I think that's they do take a hit. I think even with the PS three, they took such a hit. Well, PS three was ridiculous. It took them years to make a profit off of it anyway. So I feel like from this might be favorable for businesses like that as a good model. Yeah, as streaming basically like give you like a little shitty media box. Yeah, where like where you click on your apps and now TV box. Yeah. Thing. There you go. But the reason I included this question is because of the announcement of Google Stadia a while back. And <laughs> with a massive giant like Google funding a streaming service for gaming, uh, it, it actually sounds like it could be doable in a few years' time. Not necessarily now because we just don't have the internet. If you look at, like James said in the last time we recorded it, the PlayStation Now service is a fucking joke. You can't use it. Uh, I tried using it downstairs and I compared it with the speed of my PlayStation and it was it was just ridiculous. The the lag, the the response time is ridiculous. I yeah. would have been murdered in the game. I was playing Uncharted: The Lost Legacy, and then only for I did the comparison while we were in a, like an isolated area in the jungle, I would have been massacred. So, like the, the it is going to take a couple of years. I know Ireland here were doing a like broadband plan. Broadband evolution going to take eight years eight years and then by the time the eight years comes we're going to need it again yep because yeah. with all these gaming services and all the speed of internet is going to be increasing for the requirements and it just we're, we're left in the dust as always so yeah. uh, that's, that's kind of like the streaming services like the playstation or they just don't know what they're doing xbox they don't really dive into streaming they're kind of more focused on their store uh, you oh, yeah, the digital store, and digital store, and your know, Game disc. Pass, and which I have actually... only now launched their discless system, which they wanted to do initially. Yes, but everybody was just everyone went nuts. Remember PlayStation yeah. took the piss out of them by handing the disc. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a, that was a good video. I actually watched it recently again. Um, and in regards to digital content, like James just said, <laughs> Xbox have recently released the Xbox One S, Xbox One S discless edition mm. which genius idea of taking away the disc drive and you had some interesting things to say about it last time uh, about the pricing of it and the guy the well, yeah like I think like they released it and they were releasing it for $250 and the equivalent disc system was $250 and you got a game with it which yeah. I think was like Red Dead or something which is like a 70 euro title yeah and it's gonna in the long run or the grander scheme it's more worthwhile to have the disc system because you're not going to be forced to buy Microsoft's greedy pricing schemes on their store yeah. of sixty nine ninety nine for a new game where you can go to your local mortar and brick store like yeah. Argos for GameStop and it's just there for second hand for 40, yeah. 40 quid why would you bother the argument I made was in terms of they, they just want to monopolise Discless yeah. and restore. You're paying and us for sixty euro. You buy our system. Yeah. You do it our way. Take it or leave it. That's it. 
like they should offer some some bit of a discount even if it's like five percent or something just to show you yeah. look there is a, there is a benefit to buying it off us rather than buying it off GameStop uh, the example I'm going to use is uh, one for a PlayStation exclusive called God of War um, it costs 50 euro in Argos it costs me 10 euro to go travel to actually get the goddamn game and the game was retailing at 70 euro on PlayStation's PlayStation, what's it called? Store? Store, yeah. Yeah. And, like, how? That was the standard edition. Yeah. Like, I know the price of games is going up because of the, the storage demands and the space and all that kind of crack. But how the fuck can you justify 70 euro online compared to 50 euro in retail when I'm getting the physical copy of the disc? When I traded that in, I got 30 euro back. So it's essentially, I only paid 20 euro for a game that would have mm. lost 70 euro on. Although it is a great game, so I didn't technically lose it. But, like, I, do, I know they're trying to say, like, we're, we're losing money on people trading in these games yeah. and buying trading games and all them. Make your fucking games cheaper. Well, GameStop is going to go under eventually anyway, so... It, it, it's not GameStop anymore. It's fucking Merch Stop. Merch Stop, yeah. Merch Stop. Trademark that. They're not going to be around for much longer anyway, No, so. I think they went into, into liquidation in mm. the States somewhere not going to be around for much longer <laughs> no I would really welcome like a really small new type of game mm. store just stop fucking shoving foam t-shirts down like I went in there recently pants. I went in their GameStop recently enough and I only now I go in just for the nostalgia purpose and I never go in and buy anything I just walk past GameStop and I'm like oh GameStop triggers this thing in your yep. mind of childhood and playing games and you go in and you're like oh what's new what's happening what's what's great I remember you going to GameStop and you'd have racks of games but now you go in and it's just three or four of the same game three or four of the same game lots of merch but I went in one day recently enough and one of the staff members literally just came up to me and was just trying to cross sell me and I wasn't even buying anything and she was like oh what are you watching now at the moment and I was like oh not much really to Game of Thrones like, we have all this Game of Thrones merch it's like Walking Dead and I was like, oh, get me the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was literally just looking at it and she was trying to upsell and cross-sell. And I, hadn't, like, I hadn't even said anything. That is the digital content is you can just skip the fucking ads. Yeah. But, um, but uh, yeah, that was annoying. So. Branching off into that argument as well is uh, GameStop. Oh. I remember a time when you could walk into GameStop, they had a really good deal on let's say do you know like when they drop the from like 70 to 60 on a game that's like 6 months old mm. I remember before they used to do like 2 for 50 euro yeah. and you like this was during the Playstation 2 games where games were obviously cheaper but the fuck me the mm. difference like I got Lord of the Rings Return of the King and Star Wars <coughs> Bounty Hunter in the same day for 50 euro and those games kept me going for weeks upon months whereas now when you get a game that has an 8 hour story which is fine and I nearly prefer it because it's more like a kind of a, a series or a movie mm. but for 70 euro my god it's just getting ridiculous not worth it no it's not we should just give up gaming and take up reading books okay so this is a new question for us that we haven't answered in the last hour what do you want or hope for in the next gen of consoles uh, something that is legitimately Backwards compatible. Yeah, I get, I get what you mean. Yeah, not. Yeah, if you download it off our store, you can play you it. Can play it. Yeah. I want to be able to put my PlayStation One. No, I just not even just for just for convenience sake. Yeah, I, I can give up. away my PlayStation yeah. Four then. Yeah, like I just don't want to have to get up and be like, oh, I want to play Uncharted Two because it's a great game. I, have, I don't have it on the PS4 but I have it on the PS3 but I have to get up and have to plug in the PS3 yeah, uh, yeah. I know like with, with the, they like draw a line they drew a line under PlayStation 4 and they were like we have to do this and I was like that's okay but you fix that shit next time mm. like I don't mind paying a bit more if it's literally going to be like ultimate PlayStation yeah. play anything if I could put my PS1 games in and I would play those I'd be like ah I wouldn't even care if it was like yeah, really, happy really days. Crappy. I don't, yeah, I wouldn't give a shit. I, like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind playing it like I used to play it. Metal the Gear game, Solid. I literally was about to play Metal Gear Solid. No, just a day I'd happily play that on the PS5. <laughs> so I. I'd pay $400 just or whatever, 400 euros, 500 euros, and I'd be happy out. <laughs> and what I've heard 
PlayStation in particular, they've been the most vocal about their next generation of console. Um, they're really going after audio, which is actually really interesting because they said that there wasn't much difference between PS3 and PS4 in terms of the audio that was delivered through the system. Whereas this time around, they're really focusing on, I think it's, I, don't, I really don't want to get this wrong, but binocular sound. So when you put on your headset, it's going to be like a special headset for the PlayStation that they're really going to emphasize in the game if a can is knocked over in the corner of the room, you're going to hear it over there. Mm. And it, I know they have that kind of already in headphones, but they said they're really going after it mm. and they're really going to improve on it, which I would really, really like. It would really make you immersed into the game and it would probably be a better step than buying a VR headset. Yeah. I've not really to imagine that the VR don't like to have, because your head, like you feel it on your head, like, you know, you have a big thing in front of your here and like if you're really going to sit down and play a game for a long period of yeah. time you're going to dare for at least three or four hours for a solid session in the evening like and your head is if you have a VR headset on you're just going you're gonna to take it yeah. off and you're going to have neck cramps and like your eyes have to readjust and like it, it's, an, it's no secret I'm a big big guy uh, if I'm playing games I'm doing it because I'm lazy and I want to sit down and play the game yeah. I don't want to be doing what I used to do playing the Wii when I was a young guy and just fucking that's just like if we get like a really good headset that I don't have to sit this far away from the screen and end up with glasses like I did because I used to sit this far away from the screen that's a fucking myth anyway it's not a myth it <laughs> fucked me up bad like that all of a sudden I was struck down in my youth I needed glasses I'm that's true don't do it kids get away from this screen um where was it wrong with audio yeah, so audio is the main thing that they've said so far. They've also said that this is going to have a... Uh, what's it called? What's it called? The SAD drive? No. SSD. SSD. Yeah. Solid state drive. That's it. I also heard somewhere that they're going to have Grand Theft Auto as an exclusive for the first six months. That would be amazing. Mm. Imagine how pissed Xbox would be. I can't remember what it was. There's like this really accurate source I can't remember the name of the place and I can't quote it but it's like from a dev inside Sony leaked it to this other company that usually just puts the stuff out there that's always usually accurate and nearly 99% of the time gets it on point I really really hope that's true and one of the things was it has 32 gigs of RAM and it had all these other things on it I should have actually got it before we started this next time we're going to bring lists I'm 100% certain that in there it's a GTA exclusive for six months or something along those lines anyway. It wouldn't bother me because I have both consoles. Mm. But I'd love it just to see the bitching mm. of Xbox players who don't understand. Time, timed exclusive or whatever. Like, whatever. Yeah. It's, that information is valid at time of recording. So. Because uh, I just know because really I was good. watching it on another podcast and they had it on there and I remember looking at it. So I was like, would that be? Yeah, that's a great selling point. It would be, wouldn't it? I like. And then you'll have the PC people that will buy it because they're not going to get it for another fucking year or two anyway. Because that's yeah. always the way it would rock. I suppose then that's the way you're going to like make sure the game lasts longer. Oh yeah, exactly. Because then like you release it on PlayStation, release it on Xbox, release it on PC. That's what two years before you need to worry about doing DLC. Yeah, and they won't even do DLC anyway. <laughs> they do it for online. <laughs> I know it's not the same but it's still like those game share coins are going at least going it's how long? free of the DLC yes. that they release just keeps the game more relevant for longer with like literally all they had to do was just be bastards to but they do make millions off the microtransactions yeah the microtransactions now are a real pain in my ass yeah. I, I do not don't agree with them at all I think we talked about it last time mm. um, yeah so look the next gen we haven't got much in terms of like what games are going to be available uh if we're ever going to get like cross platform, which would be cool to a limited extent, I know they've worked on it a bit now. <laughs> Sony is very like, no, these are our ties, yeah, it's not gonna happen. No, <laughs> well, even like a better, a better like system in terms of like PC and Xbox, mm. like I know it's there already, but like, uh, the, the advantage the, they're always saying that the PC people have the advantage, but like, mm. it's it's fucking rocket league. Mm. I, I'm not going to be smashing someone with fucking keyboard yeah. powers like games like that like um, like FIFA no, no one's going to be killing each other over FIFA saying he has the advantage like, like I would, 
just because you brought just because you were saying microtransactions in FIFA it's another off topic thing but apparently they're going to make microtransactions and loot boxes illegal in the states good 100% agree FIFA has cost me thousands <laughs> over the years because I was that it's idiot like him Yes, but FIFA games are still going, and EA is where it is at the moment. <laughs> yeah. I, I think like twenty, twelve percent of their revenue comes from FIFA Ultimate Team alone. It, I would like I, I can't is I can't explain. They've already banned it in Belgium. Like Belgium are like this is gambling. It is take it out of the game. So now the people that are in Belgium. They have to do all the hard graft, and they can't buy any of the packs or anything. But like that's the fun of it. Like. <laughs> You should be able to get uh, Lionel Messi through f- hard work, not through. That to not have foul play or to buy the part. That was that's the way it should be. Like, <laughs> like capitalism at its finest. Yes, yeah. and he, we'll we'll talk about that next time. Yeah, I was gonna say next week, but it'll probably be yeah. another few weeks before we do this again. Um, yeah. So, what do I? What do you want or hope for in the next gen of consoles? No That's same question. No Michael Chan Jacksons. No Michael Chan. No Michael Chan. No Michael transactions. No Michael down the road. Mike. No Michael Jacksons. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to move into a question which will probably trigger the PC community. Is PC gaming the master race? You just want to go into this for anyone who's not familiar with the kind of the mentality around PC gaming. Me. Well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Like, have I don't you know. never like? I've never experienced the whole. I've never experienced it, but you see not. online, you see lads going nuts PC. on forums, and yeah. so when you build your own PC, it's well known that you will develop an ego over your system. Mm. It had um, AMD on X four eighty. It's four times faster on play. Like I only built mine like last year. I, I only include the question because I literally took a break from writing questions, went onto Facebook and seen a little picture of um these two like cartoon characters playing the PlayStation Four and a guy over him going, PC's the master race and then like the next time they haven't responded to him, the next one. Stop having fun <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because I know I built my PC last year and I know it's already pretty much defunct for anything else new that's coming out anyway. So really? Pretty much. Why still going? Oh, and like it's probably good for the next while, but all of it, like the triple A stuff, like like the next gen PlayStation is gonna have thirty two gigs of RAM. Yeah. Like, like when those games, like when next gen of gaming comes out, mm. my PC's fucked. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I will upgrade it or not <laughs> because like there's so much work involved, yeah. so much research, and I I didn't even build this one by myself. I had to get a guy to order all the parts for me and then tell me how to put it together. And then when I was changing the the the, the case, mm. I had to give him a phone call to come and watch me do it to make sure I didn't do it right. Did do it right. He probably yeah. did make me sabotage it now in hindsight. Yeah. I built mine myself, proud of it, but I built it with no upgradability capacity. Cause really? I, well, you can. I can, no, I can upgrade the RAM and I could do the CPU, but like if I want... But it has to be around the generation base of what the, the motherboard is now. Like, you could buy a motherboard now yeah. and it might do for another good while for new RAM and new CPUs, but, like, I couldn't, it's not really a... The way I do it is I'm going to hang on to this PC <laughs> for a, co- a good couple of years. Then, maybe I'll take out another loan and build another one. Another loan. <laughs> another loan. I've just... My life is full of loans. Anyway, yeah. PC, the master race... I don't think so. There's I don't not, think so. There's nothing special going on there. I think it's a really, really amazing sense of accomplishment unless when you, you want, finally click you that want, button and it works. I just want like bargain games on Steam, with yeah, G two A, but or other places that you shouldn't be buying from that. I tend to look at kick ass tarns. <laughs> not kick. No, I would never turn. I pay for all my games. Pirate. I just <laughs> I pay some guy who <laughs> takes them off the back of the truck. And so is the code. <laughs> no, I don't. Don't quote me on that. So, yeah, look. Obviously, the advantages of PC gaming is um, if you want to watch a video on one screen and play your game on the other one, if your computer can handle that, you can. If you want to do what we're doing right now, record uh, a podcast, you can do it on your gaming mm. PC. No, no problem whatsoever. 
If you want to stream games, you can. Much easier, I'd say, than on the consoles, because the no. consoles, you're so limited to what you can actually do. You need a special camera for PlayStation, which is ridiculous. I think it costs 50 euro, I think. Oh, God. Excuse me. Whereas, on PC, you get yourself a dodgy webcam, dodgy mic. You're pretty set up. Dodgy everything. Yeah, like you, which are everything you buy. My ah. PC is good. The microphone is a shit. You get one of these. These? I think they're actually going a lot, lot cheaper. Yeah, probably. I actually would buy you one, just so you could <laughs> start doing something by yourself. If you ever went home. For anyone who doesn't know, James never goes home. His yeah. parents one night home. a week. One night a week. <laughs> if if you're if his parents are watching him, he's actually in Thomastown right now. Stop panicking. <laughs> that's that's not even time to record. He probably is here right now as you're watching it. Mm. So yeah, PC gaming. Not master ice, no. I'd say top tier gaming. Top tier gaming, but not definitely. Like I just don't like the whole we're better than you. Up. Thing you hear like on Reddit, Reddit is like toxic for a PC gaming. Yeah, like I don't. It doesn't really uh, appeal to me too much. To be honest, it, it appeals to me. Like I do the majority of my gaming is on PC. Like I only get off the PC to game on PlayStation when I hear like a really really good game. Mm. Like, um, but the problem with me you now is the PC gaming is nearly work. Yeah, I'm recording everything and half it doesn't even make it up on YouTube because I just don't like the way it finished. But um, like cheap titles, you, you can get games on PC that can't even get any more on console. Like, but yeah, like and I like having like you can't like a, again like I buy a lot of PS One and stuff. Yeah, I, I like just having like RE One. You can get on Steam, no problem, and you can play. You can quit that play RE Five. <laughs> Whereas if you're gonna do that in real life, as we were saying earlier, you need to unplug your PlayStation One, plug in your PlayStation Three. Or I think they released. No, they didn't release. You should play Resident Evil One on the PS One because I have it at home. We should do that. <laughs> I, but I, I was actually thinking that. Um, or Medieval. <laughs> we should play Medieval because it's been released. Yeah, I've I, never I, played. I, I have one and two at home. All right. We'll I play. I remember I used to play it when I was younger, and I bought them again a while ago. And I was doing like the first level. I got about a half an hour into it, and I got to this one room of Medieval. Of Medieval, and I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I just stopped playing. I used to do a lot with games. I used to be like, What do I do? And just like turn off the game, and then I'd stay panicking, yeah. even though the game is over. I'd be like, "Oh God, what do we do? What do we do in that part?" But it doesn't tell you what to do, so I just gave up doing it. Oh. Anyway, yeah. So PC gaming is amazing. If anyone was looking to get into it, I highly recommend it. But make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, don't be afraid to get advice like I did, and it, you're you're only gonna do it if you're yeah. fairly confident. Anyway, so yeah, moving on. What is your opinion on pre-ordering video games or even consoles? Can you even pre-order a console? I think you can, yeah. yeah. Well, you can start paying it off. Yeah. Which is pre-order. Uh, I don't see the point. Like, what's the point? Like, it's going to be released anyway, so... Yeah. I mean, like, games like FIFA, like, you know, like... I think the last game I pre-ordered was, like, Fallout 4 because they had, like, a midnight launch for it, and I just wanted to go... That's like the only reason nowadays that I would consider doing another. <laughs> if I had like an event for it and it was kind of decent and it was a good game, but. I've only ever pre ordered two games. Yeah. Grand Theft Auto V, when it was originally in- announced, like the first week it was announced, I went into GameStop with my five euro at the time and said, put that on. I have to get pre ordered like Fallout New Vegas. Those are the only two games I pre ordered. It's like Fallout Vesca. Yeah. The second game was Days Gone, which I bought, which shows that. <laughs> I put my faith in Days Gone and I haven't yet been rewarded. Now the game as I've been playing through it, 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 it the, the story is the, it's just a generic story like but mm. some aspects of the gameplay are fun like uh, you're very very limited on your resources and it's capped as well so like it's really impossible to find a Molotov cocktail. Mm. You can carry three. So like huge horde of zombies coming at you a Molotov is very very useful for taking them out. Whoa, missed with that one. Throw this one when it takes out half do I really want to waste the third one that's going to take me another half an hour to get see yeah like that's where you can get caught on pre-orders is wait until the game is released read the reviews and you know if, if you don't go in the first week to get the game they're going to have more it's I think I had like week. one experience with a pre-order I can't remember what I, it wasn't like the Fallout 4 or the New Vegas it was something else I pre-ordered but it can't have you done you've done a few I can't remember I haven't done too many 
But one experience was I did it in GameStop and I went into GameStop and I was like, do you know what? I don't actually want this game. Can I just have my money back? Did they give it to you? No. <laughs> store, I was just about to say. Store credit. I was say, why would they do that? That's like a bank. Yeah, can I have my money yeah, up, please? Money just had a poke on with your buying. debit card. Like, it's just a pre-order. Like, you're not... I haven't actually bought it. Yeah, but you're committing. Nah. Like, um, I was considering on pre-ordering Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, but I, I, I don't know. Like, what was going through my head was like, yeah, I want to show my commitment to this game. I really think Respawn are going to do a good, good job. They don't give a shit if little old me from... Thomas Town and Kilkenny are pre-orders their game. They, they just want the money. So it's like, not even them. The pre-orders thing is just the, yeah for it's GameStop. Just, like, it's just the GameStop thing. Like, like you don't see Aragorn doing it. Or, even ga- even GameStop, like it. It's they just don't the, care it's, if it's, I'm. It's just the GameStop thing. Like they just want. They money. just want your money. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, we'll, give want, you, we'll give it to you. Just give us the money. They're just like we just want your money now, even though the game is not open for nine months. But we will just take the revenue now. We could be closing. Six months before the game comes out, but we still have your money. I'd love to know what happens if you do have money like invested in a pre order and they close down. They had to probably just be like, no, sorry. Well, maybe they give it to like the like if the physical stores close down, they are going to keep some kind of online <coughs> feature still available because the online store is actually pretty useful. I use it a few times. I've never gone on it, <laughs> never gone on it, never. <laughs> like, they do like do you know, the way sometimes they do like killer deals, mm. they're like the online is where they just you go on and bam straight away that's where I got my Xbox One back is because I went online and I seen that they were doing this deal like two controllers four games your Xbox for 250 euro and it was the one terabyte size I was like I would never have noticed this because I would not have gone into GameStop yeah. asking about this and I yeah maybe if you do go into GameStop you're just going to start cross selling and you're buying the shit that you don't want to do. I didn't even when I went into GameStop there was no sign for it I went up with the thing going yeah, is this is this sale and he was like yeah I was like all right, it's just uh, your advertising in the shop is pretty fucking poor, boy. So, um, in terms of like pre-ordering games, I wouldn't be hesitant to do it. I would be hesitant to do it because I got done with Days Gone because I was waiting on reviews before finally committing to the game and they announced that the reviews would only be released a day before the actual game released. So, it leaves very little time to actually mm. decide. I just, I just find pre-orders is just a quick... It's just give me your money now. Yeah, give like me. I want it. I don't care. Just give it to me now. Online, <laughs> online, like buying the game. It's very, it's very it's greedy. Good. It's very greedy practice. I think. I don't it is like I wasn't as opposed to it before you started talking, but yeah, like at least if you were to like a, this is a pro of downloading it digitally. Mm-hmm. Like if you were to download it on PC, like, I would if it it'll was, install the game and it won't let you access it until the day it's released, like which is I, good. I would pre-order if it was one of those games where you know. It's just gonna be fucking gone, yeah. like a rock star game. Yeah, like you know, last was true. You can gonna have to pre-order that. Fact, you know, you're going to GameStop the, the day after. You're like, nah, man, it's so now. Yeah. Like, should yeah. pre-order. And then you just mark that place off your list. Yeah. Like, like Argos, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's when you pre-order. I, I I would. Do you think they take the piss I, then with like only pre-order, pre-order every single game that we're releasing? Like, you don't need to pre-order Lego. Marvel 3 or whatever it is no. it's again it's just, it's, they want your money now yeah so. like if they just say that like like um, like <clears throat> they're not going to have a huge demand for every game so if they were just like lads pre-order Grand Theft Auto 6 when it comes out we're doing it please get your orders in we're only getting a limited amount at least then it creates the urgency where you're like mm. alright they're being serious this time we really need to get it whereas yeah. they're going to have a million copies of other games when they come in mm. so yeah um, in terms of consoles I'm all for making the experience more manageable in terms of money. Yeah. So like if they had some kind of payment scheme that said like pay X amount a month off and then when it comes out you just come in and pick it up. Yeah. Grand. I don't it's, mind that because like, consoles long term investment yeah. the game is short term. And even if the console is shit. Just a good return value on it anyway. Yeah. So that just about wraps us up but I had one little thing up my sleeve. I have been buying the PlayStation magazine the last couple of weeks, last couple of months, because I really like the nostalgia feel to them, even though they're not really the same as they used to be. And this came in. You can't even see with the goddamn light. Uh, the toughest PlayStation quiz book ever. 
Okay. All right. I'm going to ask you three. <laughs> okay. And I was trying to understand how you to put me on the spot with this. I am. I didn't <laughs> show him this. I had it turned upside down. On actually, also as well, as well. Got stickers. So I'm not going to bring it up, but there's kind of most of the mainstream PlayStation guys. So we have Deacon. There's the new control. I like the way they're advertising it already. Control is that. That's the new game, as you can see in the latest edition of PlayStation UK magazine. The new Spider-Man RE2 got a war. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Not so obviously, I'm not going to be using it. So here we go. Do you, have, like, do you have ones that you're like, I'm going to do, I'm going to quiz them on this one, or is you, are you just like... No, no, I've, I have not looked at this. <laughs> I, looked at, I looked at page one, I'll be honest. All right. Question one. This one's actually... this. I, I looked at this question, I didn't look at the answer, but... Which cult 90s computer is the PS2 designed based on? Oh, uh, it's... If you even get the I know, brand, I I'll be amazed. Which cult 90s? Which cult 90s computer well, is the PS2 designed based on? I'm going to do on? a story, but don't tell me if it's the answer. Oh, I know at the time before the PS1 came out, before Sony even knew they were ever going to fucking make a console to begin with, there was the Super Nintendo, and they had like this deal with Super Nintendo where they'd have like the top loader cartridge thing. Yes. And yes. they made a deal with Sony, and Sony were like, right, we'll do this DVD, or no, with a CD player where you can put disc games in, and it was supposed to be an attachment. And then no, no, Nintendo like were, disputes, uh, yeah, and Nintendo were like, ah, fuck this, we're sticking with cartridges. And then Sony were like, well, we have this, let's just fucking go with it. And then yeah. they ended up doing their thing. So Nintendo. And it worked, you know, give Nintendo? No, you're very wrong. Okay. <laughs> that's how that's how it came. That is, yes, he's right there. But it's hardly like Sega. The PS2 is inspired or based on Atari Falcon 030 Microbox. Never, never heard of it. Never heard of it. Pretty sure I've seen it. I thought it was just a big. I thought it was just a big fuck you too. Oh, hang on. Oh no, I just saw a cool Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, I know. There's questions on Metal Gear. I'll ask you one, okay? Okay. But yeah, basically, I just thought it was just. PS1 was just like a big fuck you to Nintendo for like screwing up the deal that they had. But yeah, I never did. Atari, I don't, I don't know much about Atari anyway, so. Here's one now. It's Metal Gear Solid themed, but it doesn't seem to have, it's not set, the question is not set on the series. What was the first game Hideo Kojima worked on? Police Knots. Please tell me you're right. It better be Police Knots. It has to be Police Knots. It was like a weird Japanese kind of sci-fi cop one he made. A penguin adventure. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> okay. No. I'll, I'll literally just skip through to see if there's anything. Oh, here's an interesting one. How many PS2s were sold on the day of launch? Now, I have no idea what this is. Jeez, that's a tough one. Now... Don't lose the rag yourself, is all I'm going to say. I mean, like, they sold overall. I, 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 this re- overall, they sold a couple of million. About 100 million or thereabouts. Like, yeah. well, that's what I now, think, anyway, from looking at figures every now and then. Just to see what it's, how it's doing in comparison. If you get it close enough, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. On the first day. On the very first day of PS2. Back all them years ago. PS1 was like. Bomb. And then PS2 came along and no, it's only a day. What year did it come out again? Was it not in two thousand two? Ninety nine? Ninety nine? No, it's only it's I think it's only like nineteen years old. Still making PS one games until the early. Would have been around the two thousand early two thousands I know. Two thousand three was it? Two thousand three? No, it's earlier than that. Sure, two towers came out and that was released two thousand two. I'm just trying to think of my head what game give me a goddamn just, number no I'm just trying to think of what games came out at the time with the Playstation 2 with the Playstation she 2 she would have the likes of Gran Turismo and all that kind of crap coming out with it at the same time and Grand Theft Auto would have slowly would have followed on 800,000 oh so close I'll give it to you <laughs> 500,000 okay <laughs> right ladies and gentlemen I was going to say like 2 million I don't know if they got it this is good Grand Turismo isn't like too hardcore but like 
I might write a couple of these down and actually quiz you next time on a few of them at the very end again. You're not fucking reading it. <laughs> so everyone, thank you very much for watching. This is our rough first edition of our video podcast. It'll be another little while again before we do another one. We've enjoyed ourselves. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, James, where can they find you on the media of socialness? Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Seamus the Gamers, I believe. I haven't looked at it. Seamus the Gamers. Yeah, is it? It's not oh, Aimless Seamus. Oh, it's Aimless Seamus, but the email I made for it is Seamus the Gamers. Ah, so you can email me as well. <laughs> at gmail.com. Um, <laughs> you can catch me on Facebook at Jay Gamer and YouTube if you search Jay Gamer. You won't find me. You have to search Jay Walsh for some reason because oh, that's why. Um, I started. I changed my. My first and last name on YouTube to get to go to J Gamer so that when you search the channel it's just J Gamer. I started sending emails and at the bottom it would say from J Gamer because it goes by your name on Google. So yeah, you search J Watch or J Gamer, a few of my videos will pop up. Give us both a subscribe. James is promising to release a video on his channel soon. He will. He will. I'll help you with it if you want me to. Just record <laughs> the goddamn material. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much everyone and we'll see you again.